good? Yep. All good? Okay. We'll go ahead and call to order this uh, Nelson County Board work session of June 7th, 2018 at approximately 5.04. Um, start out, are there any changes to the agenda? No, no changes in the agenda. Okay. So then moving on to item number three, efficient resource management, and 3A, the salary book, uh, which looks like Mr. Hawkins Smith. There he is. Mr. Parker's going to join me. document looks a little different um, than what you all may be used to seeing those of you uh, we've got one member that's new hasn't been through this process before looks a little different but it looks consistent with some of the other uh, documentation we're developing in the district uh, just a cover page there we'll, uh, this is my favorite page you can imagine um, it was mr. Bradley's idea I think it was a good idea we enjoyed taking that photo and and uh, we realized that during the process that uh, I guess I knew it, but uh, you know, it's one of those things was that just sort of beneath the surface for me. We have over 150 years of combined time of people in that picture in the school district. So, uh, uh, great team, and I'm grateful to be a part of it. Uh, this is the calendar that you all have already approved. You approved some months ago. Again, this is very similar, identical to what you've seen previous, uh, in previous versions of this book. And the next page is a text version of that same calendar. Uh, these are some uh, financial points uh, from uh, the vision document that you all are familiar with. We'll go to the next page. Here is a, this is a new item this year, and I'm gonna let Wanda explain uh, the payday change, I will just say that uh, Mr. Bradley suggested we actually list paydays. Is everyone with me? No, because Sorry. I can't read the thing and then we're going to make it bigger. Thank okay. You. Well, don't let me get ahead of you. Okay. Stop me. Okay. Please okay. Don't. Right. Yeah. Uh, I get to talking too fast. Uh, in the past, we've never listed paydays. Um, you know, but holidays, depending on the, the month of the year, etc., cetera, uh, paydays can change. Uh, finally, the payroll staff looked at the 2018-19 calendar. These are all pay dates that we'll be using for payroll. Uh, we are requesting approval of, as we approve this book tonight. We're request, uh, requesting that you change ever so slightly your pay date structure to pay instead of on, for example, September 1st on August 31st, one day earlier. And I'll let Wanda explain why that's uh, helpful to us. Okay, the reason we would like that change is because weekends um, if the first falls on a weekend then we have to actually go into the previous month to pay uh, holidays same thing so we're basically in some months we're having three payrolls and then one month we're having one and there's there's not a good comparison when you're actually trying to do comparison uh, budgeting and things of that nature um, also even if it doesn't fall um, if a holiday or a weekend doesn't fall on the first, we have to get taxes in two days early. So those taxes are actually coming off of our, our uh, bank statement, but it's not coming off to Munis until the next month. So th th it's, it's just not very consistent with us. We're on bank reconciliation issues for the auditor. We, we can explain it to them, but this made more sense to go to this. Well, uh, so it's the 31st or the 30th, whichever it is, ends up falling off the in that month is just on the 30th or the 29th respectively when it's done. Okay. Employees really won't notice. I don't think employees are going to notice this. Depending on the bank that people uh, belong to, they may already be getting it on a day early. It just depends. Uh, at the uh, worst case scenario for everyone, they get paid a day earlier than they did before. So I don't think we'll get uh, complaints. Uh, you mandate correct Yes. We do. And not get happy. Helps them recognize, understand. These are the dates. I know when the dates are. Honestly, I, with me, I don't know what day I get paid. I don't. I don't pay it that close of attention to it. But I know it's something like this. I wish who I work for did something like this. Yeah, I think pay dates uh, are a nice addition of the book. The uh, certified salary schedule. Uh, we're not going to be recommending a cost of living adjustment this year. These. Uh, E-figures are 
same figures we had last year. Um, so, so no changes whatsoever to that uh, that day. Classified administrator, same thing. This document looks exactly like what we had last year. The same numbers and same same grades. Classified as same thing applies. Grades uh, grades one through fifteen. No changes. Now this is a, a list of our classified positions. And this is slightly, looks a little different than, than it's looked in the past. Same information is there though. And a uh, couple of changes here. Um, we, uh, we moved bus monitors. Uh, we have bus monitor one and a bus monitor two. They work, currently they're getting paid on grade one and grade two. And we felt like it, uh, uh, it's more appropriate to move those folks up to grade three and four. Grade one starts, those folks start at $7.71 an hour. And uh, we just felt like that, I think you can probably make more at um, any fast food restaurant in town. So we made uh, that recommendation and uh, have made that move. And those folks that are in those classifications will see that change uh, with their first paycheck of the new fiscal year. Um, the other changes, uh, we have a retirement in, uh, in our technology department. Uh, that position is coming off the salary, administ classified salary administrators. Uh, talk about that when we get to that page, but they, are, they have currently have posted a help desk support tech. So we're replacing an administrator with a, a support tech that's gonna clear tickets for them. Uh, and then uh, we're adding or requesting to add an administrative specialist to classification for hourly employees which gets experienced clerical staff, whether it's HR, finance, bookkeepers, uh, infinite campus folks, clerical staff in the district, gives them an opportunity as they grow, as their uh, skills uh, improve, gives them uh, uh, something to aspire to down the line. We don't have anyone uh, that we're recommending for that classification now. It's something that down the line could be uh, something that folks uh, aspire to on that hourly schedule that grade 15 level uh, as far as classified employee grades that's it um, next page we have some name changes as you all are aware those are highlighted in red um, we did as we posted the chief financial officer position Wanda again is retiring uh, in the next couple of months and uh, as we uh, went went through that process uh, we decided to change the, the title for that position from finance officer to chief financial officer. Um, so that's in red, there's uh, just those title changes for the first four. And the uh, going forward, uh, <coughs> director of special ed index will go from what it was to 1.15 going forward. Uh, again, everything in red, it's a slight change. Uh, next page, it's your salaried classified employees um, and just going through the list, payroll officer is a position we had a few years ago. Um, and as positions changed, people changed in the office, it went away. And now we're recommending we bring that back again for, uh, uh, that's Becky Armstrong. Becky uh, will be uh, uh, taking over a larger role in the, in the payroll department. Um, the chief financial officer we just talked about, uh, finance officer is no longer on that list. We just changed the name. Um, and then you have community school media coordinator uh, and director of human resources, uh, college and career readiness coordinator. That position's on there because Mr. Bradley may want to elaborate, but we're going from one of those positions to two in the district. I think you all probably possibly had some conversation about that. School resource officer, I know some of you will be excited to see that. Uh, I think that's scheduled, to, there's an interview scheduled uh, forthcoming the next week or two. Uh, so that position will be, uh, we'll have someone on board, we hope, very soon. So it was appropriate to get that on this year's salary schedule. Um, and health services coordinator. Last year when Mr. Brown came in and we, you know, we added some nurses and we've kept them and we've got a contract with Cumberland Family Health, uh, we needed someone to step up into a larger role uh, managing those nurses. We went from four to nine or five to nine. Uh, that person currently is Liz Mattingly, and she has been getting that th throughout this year. Uh, we needed the salary schedule to reflect that uh, when we brought it back to you in June of the following year. So that's why that's uh, 
red. Um, next page, uh, extended days. And we do have a few positions where we're changing, recommending changing extended days. Uh, the preschool principal, uh, Mr. Bradley, uh, has asked that uh, we uh, make the preschool principal a 239-day uh, position. Um, that person currently is getting 19 extended days and uh, we're recommending that they go to 53 like every other principal in the district. The digital learning coach, uh, you, you see Jamie every month. She is uh, training folks constantly. I'm sure she'll be doing a lot of that when we're out of school uh, and we're requesting we go to 34 extended days for that position. Elementary and middle school assistant principals are currently at 18 extended days. We're recommending they go to 33, which is the equivalent of high school assistant principals. And Horizons Academy counselor is currently at five extended days. We're recommending they go to 18. You all probably are aware that we run summer school at Horizons. There's a lot of activity over there during the summer. And uh, those are those recommendations for extended day changes. Substitute pay scale. Uh, scale we uh, had a pretty significant change to that uh, a year or two ago and are not recommending uh, changes uh, for 18-19. Then uh, student leadership salary schedule. We uh, used to call this our extra duty salary schedule. Uh, <coughs> Uh, I like student leadership a lot better. I think it's more appropriate and uh, I'll highlight the changes, the recommended changes for you here on the first page. Middle school head athletic director. Um, and I can't remember the number off the top of my head. I didn't bring the current book, but I can tell you the middle school athletic director right now are making about $500 for the entire year. Uh, and you know, you've got football, you have girls and boys basketball, you have archery. Uh, you have eligibility issues, uh, so we felt like it was appropriate to increase the pay. Uh, we had some requests from folks uh, for stipends for fee folks to just check grades as a eligibility, uh, just check eligibility for you know that. So we felt like it was more appropriate for this person to be the facilitator of that information, but to get paid for it um, and get paid a little bit more to pay them at least the equivalent of a middle school coach. So that's the recommendation that we're bringing for you uh, for tonight as far as middle school ADs. Um, second page, there's no changes. Third page, we have a, uh, we're calling it bus behavior coach. Mr. Sanders over here. Um, we, uh, periodically we have a need for someone to ride a bus because we've got students that need some uh, support on the bus. And this year we've been doing that uh, a good part of the year, just paying someone daily when they do that. Uh, we felt like it. Uh, we might try next year going to a stipend and when you're needed you go, whether it's two days a week, one day a week, four days a week, you get a, a flat amount for the year, which is very similar to what we do for a lot of these other things. We have, if you look through here, and it's not a change, but uh, we have a, uh, a stipend if the alarm goes off. And people, you get a, you don't get paid every time you go out. You get paid a flat amount for the year. Uh, we felt like it was appropriate to try that with that particular position going forward uh, next year. And that's what that's about. Next page, there are no changes. And the final page there on the student leadership schedule, no changes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Am I going too fast? No. I'm She's looking for the football coach. I'm looking for. Oh. I'm looking for all of them. I can't do. I can't. I'm using my computer. If you think about the sport or the activity, it's in alphabetical. It's in alphabetical order. order. So well, football comes right after drama. Yeah, I can't find it. A middle middle school. Or, it doesn't make any difference. I'm having trouble getting off of one page. Oh, page 18. I know, but I'm having trouble getting. I'm just trying to get up the thing. It looks like it doesn't want to move. It doesn't want to move. Just keep on using two fingers. Just go up and it'll go. Carry on. I'm just going to watch the video. I tried that too. Well, if you get it figured out and have a question, then you stop it. I feel your pain, okay? Good. I'm glad somebody does. But we're getting better. We're all growing here. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I can't move it. 
18 in place. It's the slide 18. Yeah, it's about a third of the way down. On 18. Thank yeah, you so good. much. That's good. Right there. Continue. Okay. I'm now on the salary guidelines. We'll go to the next page and scroll through that. There's essentially you've got two two areas of red which cover really the same issue. One is for an outside employee hired in from the outside. Another one is the one promoted from within. And we've after, had some conversation over the last year or two. And for a long time we had a procedure here or statement in our salary book that said you got one year of service credit for every two worked outside. And we just found that wasn't working. We needed to give people one to one. And that's what we're recommending that we go to. Uh, next page, uh, you have one section in red there, and this is just uh, really an excerpt from uh, federal wage and hour laws. It's about 14 and 15 year olds, and I know federal wage and hour laws are available, but uh, folks don't always go read those, and we're hoping more people see this and understand by the time we get a, a timesheet from a youngster that's worked Little League basketball or whatever, it's too late if they work more hours than this law allows them to work. So we want to make sure we get this information out and share it with folks and we try to abide by those rules. That's why we added that in red uh, here. Next page, did not uh, we did not have any, uh, any changes. Um, and then uh, here we had uh, an issue that came up this year, was brought to our attention. Um, depending on, there, there are circumstances where people could leave not have worked a day in a particular fiscal year and because of the way the statute reads gotten an, an entire allocation of sick days without ever having worked a day that year and uh, if you have specific questions I'm going to turn it over to Wanda but we felt like we needed to clarify for you to get your sick day allocation you had to at least work a day that year um, bless you. Bless you. and then we uh, we also wanted to clarify for folks that earn vacation time, when they retire or separate employment, uh, if they have a vacation balance, those folks get paid out those days. They choose not to take them. They don't lose those days. And that's been the practice. We just wanted it reflected in the documentation. One, one on the uh, work one day mm -hmm. So it is, is the statute that matches up with the statute that I and why I'm asking is I know in some uh, private sector and you may you probably do, uh, know this better than any of us that some private sector you work a minimum of half the number of available days in the month and you get the hours for that month is it a little bit different in the statute in this case yes. okay um, basically and, and this is interpretation through legal okay KBE but uh, uh, certified staff, they should receive t um, the 10 sick days, no matter if they work or not. So, okay. okay. Um, well, at the beginning of the year, they the get them at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Uh, there's disagreement amongst the lawyers as to whether or not, as to how that is interpreted. Right. We felt like, uh, and, and we that through one day. Right. right. You work one day, it's clear we can't deny them their 10 day allocation. Right. Uh, so we felt like that made the most sense too. Okay. So that's uh, that's why the recommendation is what it is. Um, next page. I think that was didn't have anything on that page. Okay, and that's that's where we're at. Full time classified employees that participate in teachers' retirement. We do have sometimes there's a little confusion whether someone's certified or classified. You know, you have folks that. Uh, uh, depending on who you talk to, uh, folks, they participate in teachers' retirement, but they have a job that does not require teacher certification. If the job requires a degree, they pay into KTRS and participate in KTRS course. Uh, and we just felt like it was time to go ahead and put that here. If you are a, uh, if you participate in KTRS, you will be treated as far as rules and regs of the district as a certified employee with the exception of PSDs and CSDs. That's the way it's been but occasionally that is confusing for folks. We felt like we would, it, it made sense to address that in this book just in case that issue pops up in the future. I wanna ask something. Okay. Okay, classified uh, employees um, used to be, they did not, uh, if you contributed to the retirement, you didn't draw the interest 
if you remember one that it wasn't the same yeah. it didn't it didn't draw the same that's why you were classified and certified like teachers made more money than we did so therefore it wasn't equal to the pay that was when you retired and drew your check it wasn't it was just a pitiful amount because you didn't contribute it wasn't the same. you know what i mean well, it wasn't was based on the same thank you uh, I, I guess that's all cleared up and everything's so much better oh yes good okay because they deserve it just like teachers that it's grown a lot good i'm glad and the last item uh, in salary guidelines relates to uh, national board certification and it just clarifies the rules for uh, receiving that, that stipend. And uh, we put that in there because we get a lot of telephone calls on that. Good questions about it. Really? Yeah. Then we have uh, another slide uh, regarding financial stewardship. Uh, another slide on financial stewardship and another slide on financial stewardship and then a nice map of Nelson County. Um, I will be glad to try to answer. If you have any questions after going, I know we went through that very quickly. Obviously, we'll be bringing it back to you uh, in the, uh, at the regular June board meeting here in a, a week from Tuesday. Uh, if you have any questions tonight or if you have any questions over the next week and a half, let us know. We'll look through that. Yes, sir. The uh, payout one lump sum vacation. Uh -huh. Is it not prorated for by the amount of time they work that year if they separated? It is treated. We have always treated it like like sick days, where if you start the year, you get your entire allocation. That's the way that's been treated. I know that you have other industry where that's not the case. That's the way it's been since right. before I got here. Do all districts do that, or just us? We would have. I think we'd have to. We'd have to check on that for you. We, we can try to do that if you'd like to. We can report that back to you uh, when we come back. The first year they don't get the whole amount. It's prorated the first year. They have to work. Basically, it's like two months per each uh, day they get it's not the first year but then after that it's it's uh, according to what we have in that uh, salary schedule it's 10 yeah, days yeah. and then uh, and then over time that uh, allocation grows after five years it grows and then 10 15 which is very similar to what happens in, in most employers so any other questions I was, I was gonna say thank you to attendant Wanda we talked about the um, salary book starting really about six eight weeks ago i felt like it's something maybe the reality is um we wanted to create a document that was uh, was for the audience for the user so they put it all in one place it's also you think about putting people first it not only puts the finance department on the map but it also helps people connect to them and um, it is meant to be user friendly so we talked about adding pay dates. We talked about using this term of student leadership to align with this outcome because we think about coaches and students and that, that opportunity there. So this is also a form of stewardship as we think about um, someone like Wanda who's going to be lifting off here in a, a few months. Um, this, this is something that is, uh, as the new uh, chief finance officer steps in, this is right there in their hands. And they can work on that and they're not um, having to, to piece things together as much so this was a, a a lot you guys put a lot of time and energy into this and i think the employees throughout the district will very much appreciate the attention to detail i will add to that Elaine, you're not finding this Juan and i um, we've worked on it a lot over the last few weeks we were working on it about 30 minutes ago and because it's formatted the way it is we could go in to the host document and change it and we made a few changes we found a few things that we missed you know in all those meetings and we were changing it and when we made those changes it was live we didn't have to print scan pdf email to carla she didn't have to scramble around the last minute for this meeting it was a, a living document and we were able to make those changes and it's uh it's certainly a big improvement i think i have a question uh, can you explain again what behavior coach is I, I will try I'm glad Todd's over here because uh, he could probably do better but I will I know over as long as I can remember we've, we've had situations where we've had people that will ride but we have issues with some students that are behave having some behavior issues on a bus and when you think about a bus you think about one driver 50 kids I remember I rode a bus and I remember uh, what uh, what it was like and then uh, I can uh, 
and I, I, I know there are examples where that bus driver needs help. Absolutely. And that's really what this position is about. What we did this year and what we've done in the past, uh, we've had people that we just, they get extra pay for working, riding those routes. Uh, and we felt like um, it, it, it made sense to recommend just having a person essentially on call to ride whenever we need them. If it's every day, one week, maybe the following week, week it's two days, or the next week it's no days, uh, you know, and so forth and so on. So um, it looks like it's just one position, so that like limit it to just one, or is there like flexibility to have more? Because I can't imagine just one bus. Kids, you know, what if we run into a situation where we have more than one bus, where we've got kids with, you know, behavior issues going on, you know, and we. That's well, important. we do we do have we do have some emergency folks that we can pull. I mean, you know, I can go, Jeff can go. Um, a lot of our buses have preschool bus monitors already on them, that, and they're able to help in those situations. Um, Mike Todd Cecil did this for the most part last year, and, and he is he, he does an amazing job at this. I'm sure he, he loves this. Yeah. From what I mean, it, it's funny because he loves going out riding buses for some reason. I don't know why. I mean, he, he absolutely loves it. And, he, and he's really, really good at it. I mean, you know, um, and believe it or not, we, you know, typically we can get by with the board because okay. uh, most of our bus drivers do a really, really good job. It's just occasionally you'll have that, you know, you'll have a student pop up or, or they're just, or maybe a new driver or something like that that you just need a little bit of assistance with. And he's, he's really good at going out and doing it. So typically that, typically the one person is enough to, okay. to get by. Okay. So. Well, I'm just thinking that, you know, this is such a small amount, you know, of an investment. You know, that's, my only, that's my only fear is looking at the amount of days, you know, if he were to have to ride, more than one. you know, if he were to have to go out 100 days, yeah. you know, then, you know, you start to get, I mean, you know, we'll just have Great. to see how it plans out. How it plans out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got you. Yeah. Okay. I think ideally, it's as effective as we hope it is, yeah. it's a really good deal. Yeah, sure. For the person that's doing the job, yeah. because they do, they're so effective, they need to ride a lot less. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yes, sort of like the alarm call out things. If, if people are setting the alarms, people are trained how to set those alarms, how to deactivate those alarms. Nobody gets a 3 a.m. call <laughs> to have to go deal with it. Uh, so that's that's what I'm hoping happens. And if it doesn't, we'll adjust. Yes. In a way, it's almost like we would hope that in this case. The work of that person would work themselves out of a job. That that's, what, that's what you hope yeah. for. Yeah. If that makes sense, the way I'm saying that, and, and the work of the work of the other folks within the district would work towards that not even being a need at some point down the road. But it's nice that we have that sure. there, and it's sure. nice that we have that support. So, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Juan. Okay. Uh, moving on to 3C, the LPC planning process. Oh, I'm sorry, we'll leave basketball. I was a uh, step ahead. Yes, so, right. Tim Hawkins, hey, hey, y'all come on up. <laughs> Brad and uh, Kyle Winch is from the county. Mr. Broaddus is here to show support as well. It's just, it just takes time, D1. It just takes time. It does. You all know Tyler, I'm sure uh, I hope most of you do. Um, Tyler and Brad Spalding with the county came to me a few months ago uh, inquiring about a partnership when it comes to the Little League basketball. That's a near and dear to I think a lot of us. Um, and uh, I was really excited. I, uh, when we had that conversation, I will have to share with him that day. I may have shared this with some of you all. I approached the city rec department many years ago about possibly taking that over just as a, a, a partner. Still use RGMs, uh, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, to, to have some continuity, some facilitation there when it comes to from one year to the next, scheduling, uh, background checks on coaches, the, those type of things that uh, most other Little League programs do. Uh, it's been run for many years, but Mr. Broad is back over here, and you know I don't think the community can thank him enough. He's going to stay very much involved with it. Uh, but, uh, you know, if he ever wanted to retire, now he, he could at least step away some. I, he was in my office earlier and said, uh, well, he could, he could go to spring training now if he wanted to. Uh, but he, he hadn't been able to because he's been making basketball schedules for since I, I came here or before. Um, 
I know Tyler and Brad, uh, you know, with the support of Fiscal Court, um, will be a good partner for us. And with that, I'll turn it over to Tyler and let you let him tell you what his thoughts are on the matter and uh, go from there. Uh, for us, the biggest thing is we just want to we want to keep it the way it's how it's going. We just want to have. For me, it kind of fills a void for me uh, because I take care of the park. So there's a time, there's a couple months there that there's some downtime for me that I could fill that void and help out with little league basketball. Uh, I used to do so with uh, the girls of little league in uh, years past, uh, and I just wanted to make sure that we had somebody in place. So when Bill does decide to, to decide to hang it up, we have somebody there that can continue it, continue what he's done. Um, and that's really what we're wanting to do. Um, we're not wanting to come in and completely rework how it's going. It's, it's going well. You have your hiccups that you, with every league, but we just want to continue to grow it and make it as good for our kids as we can. So essentially this is a merger thing, so we merging. Our schools will still host the games. Yeah. You'll still go to the, the games, the same gyms you've always gone to. They'll still be able to fundraise as a result of hosting. Uh, you know, they'll it'll just we'll have some resources we haven't had. Whether it's assigning officials, uh, I've talked to uh, Tyler and uh, Brad about possibly using Arbiter Bay uh, for officials. I don't know if, how, where we're at with that, but that's something I know we're going to work on. Just so you know, what that means is if they have a slate of games at Foster Heights Saturday, the bookkeepers got to have a paycheck ready for those referees. If we can save them that step, it's saving that bookkeeper time. Uh, this will allow us to consider things like that. Um, so I think there's a lot of improvements that we can see as a result of this partnership. I is think this a AU? No. 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 Okay, that's why I want to know. No. Okay. No, it's the same little league. Same, that we league, little league. same little league. We're just wanting to be the, I guess, the people that oversee you, that do the scheduling. Uh, I guess be the complaint compartment too and try to take that off the principals and the school staff that is getting that stuff right now. Is that an issue? No, I'm just saying in, in general, you know. There's always there's always one or two. Comments. Yeah. Comments. I think it's a good opportunity to talk about community centeredness and <clears throat> work with community partners like you guys to share resources, share leadership. And I think it's uh, building off of the work that Bill's been doing. This is a good opportunity for us. Well, it sounds like it's a good session for me, too, um, for Mr. Bryce when he decides to you know, go into the next chapter of your life. And um, like you said, someone can step in. And, you know what I mean? And yeah. It also helps us fill a void uh, for our little leagues that we can reach out to more kids and maybe get them out for our mm -hmm. soccer, football, baseball, sure. uh, because we'll see them in the winter. Sometimes our league presidents and myself, we don't see them all winter, so we can't really reach out to them and try to entice them to come play soccer or play baseball or football, so it kind of helps fill that void too. But especially if that need, I think we're still willing to try and help students help young boys, young girls figure out what it is that they enjoy. Um, our rule in our household was finding something in the fall, finding something in the spring. Uh, and this will possibly allow, allow you all to help that happen for Correct. youth in the community as well. What is it you want to be able to be doing with yourself as that extracurricular activity or that school activity as you continue to get older in the middle school and the high school? So again, it sounds like that partnership. So what we would like to do for you guys is to submit a, I don't know if we give it to Mr. Bradley or Tim or whomever, it's a document that says, this is what we're going to provide to you. This is what we would, you know, we want to use facilities. We have no facilities uh, to use. And we've already spoken with Bardstown too. You guys are the two big players in this. And they're on board as well. They want to participate is how they put it in the league, just as they do now. So we'll come back to you guys. So if you have anything you'd like to see in this particular document, I know Tim and I and Tyler and Bill have discussed insurance and background checks and you know, all the specifics. But if there's anything you want, get it to Tim. Uh, we'll, we'll try to incorporate it in some sort of document for you guys to maybe at your next, your official meeting to approve them because uh, we need to probably be moving forward. So, uh, because girls, we start meetings in the, in the August. 
But it still gives me time because I'm trying okay. to wind down with baseball and stuff that kind of that helps me out. Mr. B was asking me if I had stuff up ready to go yet, and I was like, baseball is kind of taking priority right this minute. Well, and I would have to guess that Mr. Barraza has a lot of what you were just talking about stored right up here. Uh, and he's ready to go, okay, get up and pay. Wow. Mr. Barraza will be teaching you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that's what we want. Is this different than like the rec league? From the city? Yes. 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 This will be uh, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Okay. That's this, why they, they stop okay. at third grade. That's why, while we really seeing that we might be good to fit in because if Mr. B does, decides to step down and there's nobody there, now you have a fourth, fifth, and sixth grade kids that have no basketball now. So who's no, going? Don't have anything. So who's going to take that over? Mm -hmm. Uh, because the record stops at uh, third grade, and then middle school picks up at six, seven, eight, and then high school. But so you're going to you're going to you're going to miss a gap. Well, and the key is I know how much I've been involved in some of this stuff over the years, and I know how much time it takes, and I have a pretty good idea how much time Bill puts into this, and to expect someone else to take that role over, you know, somebody would step up, but then you'd have a revolving door year after year trying to find somebody to do it. And for it to be a good program, we need to support someone like the folks from the county. These people that understand how to run these right. programs. What sports do you cover? We take care of baseball, uh, baseball and softball, football, and uh, soccer. And boys and girls. Boys and girls. Correct. All right, please. All right, please. Just want to know because the quality. Yep. Let's go to We actually have, some, we had probably four or five girls play football last year. I know. Uh, so. Oh, that's not a problem. I'm really excited about doing it. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving into 3C, the LPC planning process. Um, Sam. Yes, I'll be, I'll be very brief. Um, every four years, uh, school boards are required to submit a district facility plan, which requires the formation of a local planning committee. You have to have a series of meetings to put your plan forth. Ours is actually going into year five because we, we asked and received a one-year extension last year. So ours will be due in June of 2019 when ours will be due. So my reason for being here tonight is to ask you guys to consider at your next board meeting to go ahead and appoint one of you be the represent the board representative on the LPC committee. We need one board member to be on that committee. So I'm asking you at your next board meeting for someone to make a motion and appoint um, one of you to be on that. I think Damon might be the only one of you guys that have been through this process before. No, 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 no. Well, you meant that as, as a as you were a committee, wasn't it? It was the year before you first came on. I mean, like literally that election. Yes. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. So you want me to talk through the, the process a little yeah, bit, Wes? Just a reminder of the, the whole process, too. Um, so, you know, as, so as we developed the committee, the, then we had to get our architect and engineers involved, and they had to go through the building evaluations. Uh, we are in, right in the midst right now of starting an all-new system called Fight Pack in, in the state, and Stephen Ward is working to get all of our buildings on that automated system. Once that is complete, then we can go ahead and take the next step and start having our LPC meetings. Until that is done, we can't do that. And then uh, when Stephen comes back to us with the building evaluations, then we'll be able to sit down and go through and meet as a committee and decide how to prioritize the things that we feel should be on that, on that district facilities plan. Um, after we're finished and we submit our plan, it'll go to KDE. They will review the district facility plan then we'll go through the voting process. The board will, will go through their voting process. You have your public hearing, and then you're um, then you're at the end of the you're at the end of it. And it's, it takes about it shoot from start to finish. You're probably looking at about six to eight months to get through to get through the whole thing. Yep. It's a commitment. So this is the next six weeks, seven weeks. Yeah, so we will we will begin advertising for the committee through uh, 
through each school's communication devices because we have to have, since we have over four schools, we have to have 20 people on our committee. Um, it requires, and I did not bring my list with me, but you, it well, it's, it's up there anyway. The superintendent has to be on it, four parents, four teachers, four building administrators, facility, facility director, one central office staff, three community members, one board member, and one local building and zoning um, person. Um, and then that takes you right through the, that takes you right through the rest of it there. And then we'll be up and rolling. So then your, your need of us would be then on the regular meeting a couple of weeks is to have identified who that To have identified who that board representative is going to be on that committee. That's what we need to do. It looks like, it might seem like that the uh, July 19th, so the July uh, regular board meeting is whenever the entire team would have been put together. Yes, okay. that's what we're hoping. Okay. So, that's the goal and like I say a lot of that's going to hinge on Stephen's got to get that fact pack stuff finished but I mean we, we can have our committee developed sure. even without that sure. but we can't take any steps past that until that is done if that makes sense Working yeah yeah sure. so any questions Mr. Chairman I'm going to um, item 3D, um, uh, Greg membership with the Green River Regional Educational Cooperative. So we've been a member of Central Kentucky Educational Cooperative for some time, CKEC. Um, we think about inspired leadership, inspired learning. This is really professional learning amongst uh, adults throughout the district that impacts students. Um, as, a, uh, as an educator in our state, Green River Regional Educational Cooperative is really highly respected, and they have 43 districts. Every district essentially west of us, until you get to the far western corner, is a part of the Green River uh, Regional Educational Cooperative, and uh, I'll be recommending to the board that we join the uh, GREC, it's called, uh, and we uh, sign off on that on the June 19th board meeting. What's the difference? CKEC is uh, right around us. Um, it's a little bit smaller. I think it's 28 districts in the CKEC. Um, honestly, I think they do a lot of good work at CKEC. We've been working with them collaboratively for years. Yes, we have. I think the uh, GREC membership, due to the size of it and due to uh, some of the alliances that have formed down there, some of the grants that they've received over the past 10 years, have just made them a little better fit for innovation and growth in our in our schools. Uh, they have some districts that are doing some of the more future-centered stuff and um, my my relationships that I can see down there uh, over the next four years are gonna give us a lot of opportunity for alliances between teachers principals and um, I think it's uh, they've done some great work they have strong leadership okay uh, moving on to 3e addition of the college and career coordinator so this really, um, if I, should, I probably should have linked the reorganization document. So the, the only uh, additional position that I'm recommending based on the reorganization is a local <coughs> level college and career coordinator, which is, so Amber Guti, who's done amazing work for the past two years. You think about our work about around being dedicated to the community and those alliances that she's formed. She's, Amber's made those connections at the central office level. Um, as someone that knows the type of work it's going to take for us to get so one of the goals is about 2020 august 2020 our seniors in their schedule they'll all have a work experience within the school day so that's going to change the way we think about the nature of our jobs and it's also going to change the, the amount of resources we're allocating to get kids into the workforce while still maintaining academic focus in high school so in order to do that in order to get, when we say every kid, into the workforce before they leave us, it's going to take more resource. So Amber um, and this additional college and career coordinator, which while they're focused supremely really on the career piece right now, um, is would, would be placed at a local high school. And for me, that's important for the reason of ownership, really knowing the kids, working closely with those kids. and 
when we think about the reality of workforce development, it also has someone that's looking closely with the local school around the curriculum and integration into the curriculum around work ethic certification. And there would be essentially a team of three people, one person in each high school and the workforce development director that would be working to make this happen. So in many ways, it is just furthering our commitment to the community and workforce development. Okay, when you say work, what, what are you talking about? If a student, my idea of what you said just work, mm -hmm. that they would uh, go out to the community and physically work yes. something. If that student doesn't want to, what do you, what's the consequence to that? If all they want to do is go to school or go yep. to college or, and yep. they don't care anything about going to work. Right. So what do you do with that? I think, I think it's a good, that's a great question. And the, the answer to that right now is, I think we, it's gonna force us to really evaluate what we mean when we say work and how we're reframing the definition of work and giving opportunities for kids to do things that align to their college and or career interests. So that's why, again, why I think it's gonna take more brains and more time around the table to make it happen. So some of these will be paid, some of the students will be getting paid in roles, some of these students will be in unpaid internships, unpaid apprenticeships, paid apprenticeships, it's gonna be a mix of things. What we wanna make sure is that we're streamlining resources so that kids, while they're in school, are already engaged in the workforce. Because as you know, when they step out the door, we are no longer monitoring and engaging with them at that point. We want them to hit the ground while in high school so that we can continue to build the character traits and the work, work ethic certification piece while they're doing some of that work. Which, there, as far as I know, no, no district in the state of Kentucky is doing this uh, on the scale that we plan to do that. Okay, because I'm thinking, let's say Lulu wants to be a dentist. Mm -hmm. you know, Lulu can be a dentist. Yeah. But if you say, okay, do you want to go work side by side with a local dentist or mm -hmm. do you, do you know what I'm going after here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to take. Because there's a different, a lawyer, a dentist, yeah. a doctor, and so absolutely. forth. Professional. professional. That's why it's going to take a lot. That's why it's that additional to person but to do this well I think in fact I think if we meet this goal in 2020 I think we're going to realize there's other possibilities this also goes along with the potential changing in graduation requirements so at the Kentucky Department of Education they're in discussion right now and I think in the next six months we'll hear more about this but I see the graduation requirements for certain courses that are mandated right now to change and give us more space in our school day for kids to do this type of, of Yeah, because you know what he's going after? He's 28 units to 30. That's what we were told at our last meeting. But reducing the mandated course requirements. So mm -hmm. currently, for example, we have four required English classes, four required math classes, three required history, three required science. As an example, there are other requirements too. Lessening those, increasing flexibility for kids to do something more performance-based like this. Am I wrong in thinking this stuff and stream me out now that we're using the term work and it's very easy to apply that to a job where you clock in and out. The example I have in my head that I keep thinking is if my daughter wants to be a plastic surgeon and that seems to be a reality for her, right. that her school work time might be in an art, an extra sculpting class for hand dexterity. Or if my son would, wanted to be an attorney, that the legitimate thing for him to work may be an additional legal research, mm -hmm. something that he does. So I'm not looking at it as so much work as in punch a time clock. That's what I'm right. talking about. I think, it, I think it's going to be multifaceted. I think okay. that what you, the, what the two ideas you, the both of you have brought up are great examples of how it's going to help us reimagine what it means to prepare to work. Well, it yeah. might not be wrong to make everybody do, I mean, just do one week on a road crew and then do one week, you know, it might change people's mind. Fried chicken for a week, it'll change your mind. So you get, you, the example, the two examples you have given there, I mean, there's also the in-between piece. Um, so Jennifer's about ready to graduate from UK. English degree wants to be in the publishing editing business. And so one of her works is that traditional Traditional is not the right word, but if you hear the, the, the phrase internship, um, that's what she did in the fall. She had that work experience. She did not get paid for it. Uh, it was with the University Press. Uh, it was reading, evaluating, presenting to a, a group 
within that office potential uh, documents for publication. You know, she's, there was one of them about UK uh, basketball history because uh, that one really caught her attention there and she would call me and tell me all about what she was reading about. Um, but what she got in payment out of that was one, it was that experience piece and that connection piece. She's now starting to realize it's the networking that is so critical in any type of position. But then the other piece was she received credit for that internship as well. It's so, for a lot of yeah, so it, 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 you pay to work. Yeah, so that work could it could be a a check. It could right. be you've got an experience where you either fortify you want that as your career down the road, or it fortifies. Oh my God, that is not what I thought it was all about, and it's time for me to change what my goals are in life because those are just as valuable. Uh, you know, the student that wants to go into medicine and they take their first class over here at the AE, uh, Area Technology Center and the first time blood is drawn, they go and hit the floor like in the opening scene of Quincy. Uh, and for those that are old enough to remember Quincy, <laughs> uh, I'll put it that way. Um, and, um, and it could also even be that their work payment is there's a, a credit that they've received of that, uh, some sort of credit towards, because you know, the, the, even the students that do want to just go on to college, they will find that that internship piece is a critical part of college as well, is finding that job. As a, as a law student, what year uh, were you, whenever you went out and you clerked for someone or you worked in that law firm and you got all the grunt work that you had to do, uh, for them that they just kept saying here you go. I worked and full time every day and went to law school. Yeah. Okay. Well, so years. And, and so there was you know this purpose where you know that law student ends up having that experience as well and maybe they didn't get anything but a lunch on Fridays and a pat on the back. Uh, so uh, I mean that, that this will be that opportunity where it, like, I think like what you're saying uh, Ms. Morelli is that it is so the possibilities of so many different things that one person or even part of a person's attention can't satisfy that need. I just wanted to make sure that it was clear that we weren't, when we say work, yeah. that we're not talking about mm -hmm. dick and ditches. We're not talking about things. 8 to 11 at Wendy's. We're not talking about the kind of job that I expect my child yeah. to get when she's 16. I think what he means is like work-based learning. So under yeah. work-based right. learning, there's internships and apprenticeships and job showing and yeah. mentoring. So they can look a bunch of different ways. Like right now we have a student interested in accounting. He's at a big um, business working in the accounting position. We have someone at a law office. We have someone. So your person's interested in surgery, that we said. So no, I was using as an okay. example. How so if, if they're interested in surgery, putting them somewhere in a healthcare facility so that they start learning those skills because whenever they go into an interview and they're competing with students from other districts, you would like someone who has taken someone's temperature and had hands-on skills more than you would yeah. for a student who just had that academic aspect. If they have those hands-on experiences, it makes so them more are competitive. We, are we right. leaning towards thinking that this is going to be something that's going to make people choose Nelson County schools over private schools? I think if we do anything well, um, then it's going to, we're offering you know, a unique experience as a district. This is something that in order to do it well, we have to put more people at the table and they have to be locally locally owned by schools, at least the high school, because that's where our goal is. And they have to know those kids, they have to know the families, and we have to build capacity in our community. Part of that building capacity is changing the conversation, which is what we're doing right now. I would say change the second half of what you just said and say that people will choose nothing kind of schools. Period. This, yeah. yeah. Forget the private school piece. Right. They'll choose they'll, they'll Nelson choose, County choose. Schools. And the people who want true college friends will pick true college friends. It, it offers a unique opportunity. I think we're I think we're going to be able to offer all those things. Uh, the reality is, for schools, the future of schools. You know, this conversation around why do, why do schools exist. This is one of the reasons we know that schools exist. So you can do both. You can be prepared for college. You're going to have the skills and the work ethic to move into the workforce just like you did where you were working two jobs where you were doing going to school and working at the same time. I think uh, years ago we all worked and went to school at the same time. These kids don't know what it is to work and go to school at the same time. When you
you have the option of internships too, or maybe the first semester they're taking college courses that relate to their interests, and then that second semester is when they're actually assigned. I mean, you're, you're bringing the college and career together. So therefore, you're going to have to change the requirements because you won't be sitting in a classroom six hours, I mean seven hours or whatever, for two semesters. So they'll have to, things will have to be rearranged. Okay. I think everybody in the state, if they're going to be doing what's in the best interest of the kids, is going to be reevaluating how they uh, require, what they require. Yep. So June 19th, I'll be, ta I'll be bringing that to recommend it for that additional position. The, and on that position, or will in this next item F, have the job description for that position? No, because we already have the job description. Okay. We're just adding a mm -hmm. second spot. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. Okay. Okay, so moving on then to 3F, job description updates. So the the uh, first position is just the, the chief financial officer. <coughs> position Tim can you talk through this real quick so the we revised job qualifications performance goals and who they reported to well the position reports to the chief operating officer we did uh, change the job the qualifications to a CPA or MBA preferred bachelor's degree required um, we also included uh, site-based allocation work in that uh, job description as we you know prepare for the future uh, transitions that, that will occur um, you know and uh, over the next few months or years you know we'll have even when you've got 150 years of <laughs> service in one department uh, you, you will have some change and uh, that's the reason for that um, you know I think primarily I mean into the, the finance I tweaked some language. Honestly, I don't remember everything I changed. I will tell you the primary change was adding to, uh, from Wanda's job description to this one, site-based allocations, management of the budget, um, and the uh, education requirements, the general gist of the required uh, changes. And I think over the, it uh, looks like I misspelled requirements. <laughs> And current, that's all right. That red lines, that, that yeah. red lines will kill us. You know, time. You know, I, you know, I hate that red line. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I did it twice, uh, sir. Uh, anyway, oh, uh, it's never been a strength. Um, you were perfect in my eyes until just now. <laughs> yeah, I need to go home. Up, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. I, Wes and I have talked some about this. What I I wouldn't be surprised if a year from now job descriptions are tweaked again. You know we've got uh, uh, new strange. HR no, yeah new HR person coming in. I think there'll be a lot of work done on all these things. Uh, and uh, and over time over time they're getting nailed down and they'll be uh, uh, it'll, but it'll take a little time. Uh, but I felt like those those minor changes. Uh, reflect uh, you know what we want in this position as it stands today the, the, and the some of the changes in the job description here takes into account what the recommendations and any of the new requirements that uh, the of KD. correct uh, the, it also st states and I think it was already in there but it states that they need uh, financial officer certification to the Department of Education okay. and all of those things so the uh, second thing. So the next item I'm sharing with you is, has some job descriptions you've already seen. Um, if you click now, you should go to see. All right. Uh, okay. Now. What's the deal here? Yeah. There it goes. If you, if you zoom in on the, um, if you go up to the, uh, present? no, I'll show you the easy way to do it. There you go. So, uh, to be honest with you, the school resource officer uh, job description was, was created. Um, as we looked back, uh, the decision was made 
to, for the position, but there was no job description, so this is the job description. Um, and we really wanted to up the ante, if you will, around expectations. We see this, uh, we see this role as a, as a school resource officer being not simply policing, but really a program builder, someone that understands the needs in our schools and how we can integrate some, some opportunities for students to learn and grow and be a part of our community proactively. So those, those are included in the job description, um, along with some things that we feel like are, are really some important requirements um, and partnership pieces within our community. West, do they, or Mr. Bray, do they have the authority to to restrain a child? If, if necessary, yes. Okay, that, I mean. Yes. I want them to. I mean, I, I feel like if we're putting them out there as that, and yep. they have the right training, they're right. not going to hurt a child. Do, they're probably going to make the child safer than they were in an inappropriate right, situation. So I just wanted to know that. The only thing I have to say about this is uh, there's too many, to me, there's too many districts that hire retired mm -hmm. people. And it's just, I, I don't mind a mid number retire, but when you get to a older American that's retired, I have a problem. Well, well, the physical. Just, yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. You're, you're talking about so, things like that like to restrain a person and to I, I'm, you know I think I'm so the, the qualifications as you can see uh, are not <laughs> I don't know any other way to put it are uh, minimum physical requirements to perform essential job functions um, along with some other pieces that are going to be important to doing the job well yes that because I saw in there were fit minimal physical requirement to perform essential job functions but we want to make sure that they can lift and can run and can carry and Who can is the best person, male, female, exactly. uh, 20 or 60? Uh, I mean, my dad would be a better school resource officer than I mean, He'd probably outrun me and do all those things more than me. He's, you know, 30 years old. So I don't think it's yeah. the necessary type of age. No, but usually when they're talking about a retired, you know what I mean. It is their sure. No, but I'm, I'm saying coming. just like today when they're talking about retired officers okay. being an OS. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. this will be there. Um, if I'm, uh, there shouldn't really at this point be any revisions to this job description before the June nineteenth. Uh, we are also looking to um, potentially hire someone in the next few weeks for this role, so they can start July first. Has it already been posted? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. There's only one or is two? There's just one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we going to be able to get a second? Currently, there's just plans for one to start with one. Are these going to bounce around schools or only in the high schools? Or no. So I think part of the interview process is we're we're asking them to share a vision for shared leadership, and with a team of principals and a parent in our district, we've been working on a vision for what their job is, and I I would love to share that with you guys. Actually, in fact, if you go to the blog that I shared with you you can see if you click on that agenda for school resource office you can see the requirements for the interview so does that concern you about only having one i think if we have the right person and they're doing the work well and um they're partnering with the community we're going to be able to get a pretty good sense right away um if it takes one person I, i'll be honest i'm a little concerned about just having one but mm -hmm. That's just the way give, I feel. Give him the tools to do his job, yeah. get out of the way, and if it doesn't work, he'll come back to us to fix it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got two things rolling at one time, that's that's where I had a concern. Right, right now, we've got one position funded. So yeah. for yeah. right now, okay. we will have to stay with that one. And as I think what as Mr. Brown was saying, we'll have to see whether or not mm -hmm. it does meet those needs. And if not, like we just discussed with the uh, college and uh, mm -hmm. Career coordinator. I know I just butchered the job oh, title. Yeah. Thank you. Um, then we may have to come back with a second one at some point. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the next piece is uh, jobs that we are abolishing for a variety of reasons. Um, today we're not taking any action 
you have access to all these positions. Uh, I will tell you that in the next three months, as uh, the Director of Human Resources begins their work, we'll be coming back to you with more um, job descriptions and the potential for other jobs to be abolished that no longer exist. Uh, we also will be coming back to you with some revisions in certain job descriptions. Um, you'll see on here that the, job, that the rationale for abolishment in most, of ca in most cases is because they were either obsolete or redundant, became obsolete or redundant over time. Uh, for example, in a few cases, um, there were, this is a position that someone that works here currently maybe had 10 years ago and they, they moved out of that position. In other cases, you're going to see four positions in particular that the jobs are being abolished based on the reorganization um, to better align resources to serve the mission of our school. So you can click on the job description on the left. I'm not going to click on every one of them, but you'll have a, you, you can click on any of those. Any of these positions that are obsolete or redundant, there's no one currently working in those roles in our district. So you also see you also see a few different formats, and I've talked to some of you already about making sure that they're in one place in the same format. Mm -hmm. And we'll be, that's something that I'm really shooting for October to have fully in place. Who's our grant writer then? I mean, how are we handling these? So I think that's a great question. And so if you take a look at the way that the nature of grants mm -hmm. and the way they've evolved, they have to be on the spot, and that person that's writing that grant has to be the person that is really passionate about it. For example, Amber, who's sitting behind you, has written a lot of grants that are workforce related. Um, we have a early learning center grant that we're looking at that the early learning center principal is evaluating. So it's like how do we, as we think about the nature of grants, they are very personal in nature and we want to have those locally owned. So in a sense we're all grant writers. Well the big grant writers then that get the big yeah. money or get money, that's what I'm going after. And I think we're changing the paradigm around that to be that we have a number of, of individuals within our district that have the capacity to write grants. Well, it's also, you, you uh, remember calling our meeting, Greg, they have a grant writing uh, mm -hmm. staff person down there that will be supporting the district that we haven't had previously. Uh, and no extra cost in the district. Mm -hmm. It looks like some of these job descriptions that are also listed as being abolished based upon obsolete or redundant are possibly ones that the job description had a valid need at some point. Mm -hmm. it, evolved like the director of budget and finance i think was one i saw there and that's probably a job description that just never had been abolished but should have been right. 10 years ago or how long right. ago it needed to be exactly. done so this is cleanup time right and, okay. I, and i can assure you we're going to come back in um, october or before with some additional Okay, so that got us on the job description updates. Yes. yes. Okay. So moving on, do you have a question? No, okay. I'm just having computers. Okay. Um, moving on to agenda item four, college and career readiness for a master schedule. It's back to Mr. Hawkins, man. He's making his way. Okay. I didn't do this one, so there's a spelling error here. <laughs> Blame someone else. Um, I'm pinch hitting tonight for Mr. Leathers, who's out, uh, some health issues, and uh, I think these are pretty straightforward. You all approve these every year at this time. You've got an individual sheet for each school um, with starting time, ending time, uh, total annual minutes. Uh, he's reflected here what's required for hours, excuse me, total annual hours. Uh, you know, we sometimes get into that conversation about, uh, you know, can we get out early two hours and not put ourselves at risk and that's when these type of documents uh, come into play for us uh, uh, so we know we're in good shape and it, obviously we are we've got a minimum it's about 25 hours throughout the year that, uh, that are in excess of what's required um, so if you just scroll through each of those pages you'll see the differences and that the start and stop times a lot of that uh, is related to our transportation system in the district as you all know uh, we've got a big county and buses travel throughout the county and there's a lot of connections and uh, you know uh, s uh, start times and end times are impacted by the ability of those buses to be there so that's that's why they are what they are uh, 
if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them, or, or certainly I, we get back to you with an answer. But I think it's pretty straightforward. Same as last year, or has anything changed? Uh, to my knowledge, there's no changes. I know we had a change in preschool, um, and we don't have anyone here. I, I can tell you we did have a minor change in preschool. I know we talked about it at length in board meetings over yeah, the last few months. Uh, I, I can't remember the specifics of it, but I certainly can find out. It was. It was about a five-minute change. Um, and i tell you what we can do. I think it would be, be good to have this. Uh, uh, we'll get a, uh, just like we did in the salary book where we reflected and read anything that changed, we'll get you a document, a simple little Google sheet that reflects changes from the previous year so you'll be able to see that. We'll get, have that for you for uh, the meeting on the 19th. Any Do questions? The veg can start school at 10. That would be my time. At 10? Yeah. Then you'd have to go to about 5. That'd be fine. <laughs> Work for me. Moving on to uh, four, thank you, Ms. Tarkinson. 4B, uh, new skills for youth grant. Okay, so we came to you, I think it was March, just um, you all signed a board of resolutions letting us know we could apply for this. So coming to you today to let you know that we did receive it. Um, so it is $115,000. You all can see on there the partnering districts, Bargetown, LaRue, Marion, Elizabethtown, Community Technical. Um, we have 27 letters of commitment. So if you all, you all can click on part one and part two, and that's actually our awarded application. And even though there's four partnering dis districts, Nelson County is the fiscal agent, so we will be receiving that. Okay, so this is, a, this is the grant that Ms. Brown and others worked on this, correct? Correct. There were about 11 of us from four different districts okay, that worked on and it. And what exactly does the 115000 go for? Can you go to slide four? We'll skip around. So here is the budget, um, and that's what I'm coming to you all today. There is a team planning lead salary of 30000 Being that we're the fiscal agent, we are the ones that have to post that, even though they will be serving all school districts. Um, and then you see on there $40,000 for travel. That's for Career Academy visits, um, professional learning, just about what we're going to do with this Career Academy. Um, that will be open to all four districts, so the team planning lead will conduct all of that. Uh, marketing communication, you see on there 30000 legal fees, expenses, 3000 So when we wrote this grant, we mimicked this budget off of two other districts that applied for the grant. So that's where that budget came from. What exactly is the purpose of the grant? Can you go to slide two? I'm glad I'm leading you right into this. You are. You are. I'm glad I know the answer. Okay, so um, this new skills for youth, this is um, – it was from KDE, Career and Technical, and overall it is looking to transform the way career and technical education is delivered. So in normal terms, it's increasing pathways that are employer-led. So we have 27 employers from advanced manufacturing and healthcare, transportation, logistics, and business. And so the idea is business and industry are gonna come in and meet with a team, um, the team planning lead, and people such as myself, and we're gonna learn from them on what career pathways they need so that it can lead into um, internships and apprenticeships. So it's just leading our kids into those high demand pathways. Good. Are those 27 the ones on the first slide? They, well, yes, but I did not do all of the okay. Legos. I just but made those that those are the examples of something. Mm -hmm. All of the letters of commitment are on part two. So if you go to our word application, go to part two, you'll actually be able to see all 27 letters of commitment that we receive from every business and industry. Um, so yeah, you should take a look at the application. Part two will show you everything. And how did that, and how did you, how was that approached? I mean, the 27 letters, you got 27, what, how did that happen? I mean, what'd you do? It's my, I mean, business and industry, I've been working with them for two years now. I know, but so how, what did you do? Did you approach the businesses and say, would you like to partnership with us? Or did you, mm -hmm. how did you do it? Because mm -hmm. there's so to, many. Right, I talked to HRs weekly daily so i just had that relationship i'm in meetings with them all the time uh -huh. so just simply asking them hey this is our goal we're just needing your direction on what you're seeing are the needs in the industry and we want you to help us in the education standpoint okay the 115,000 then is part of to continue this continue this good question so the 115,000 is only for one year it has to be from 2018 2019 school year and it is strict a planning grant 
So for this full year, that team planning lead and all the school districts and all the business industry will come together and say, this is how we're going to move forward with this. Um, and including in that, again, because college and career do go together, the dual credit piece and the recognized certificate and credentials. So all of that will be planned for the next year on how we're going to move forward. Okay, so you're going to take that money and we're going to split it between the five schools, five counties or whatever, or four or five. And then those people are going to take that money and go to their deal? No. No, it's all together. So it is a, it's kind of like a regional partnership. So, I mean, in that grant, there's options for shared resources. So, for example, in the grant, if you look, um, aeronautics has been big. We've had three yes. business and industry come to us and say aeronautics. So, where we might not be able to pay for an aeronautics teacher full time, we might be able to share a teacher with the other districts. And so, our students have access to aeronautics, but where we don't have 200 kids interested in aeronautics, we can still get the 20 that are. So, it's, it's again, in that planning grant, it's to plan for possibilities such as that. Okay, now let me ask something else. Let's say you have 10 students here, 10 students at Barstown, or 10 students at uh, Springfield, mm -hmm. okay? If they're, and that's not enough for just one 10 student. Do, those, do they bring together those students? That's part of the planning grant. I mean, there are immense opportunities. So that's why this grant is strictly for planning, because we don't know what it's gonna look like. Yeah, so you, it would be safe to say this $115,000 is the cost of figuring out how to meet to the together. needs of students across the five districts with the 27, yes. like 27 business partners to identify what are the needs that those 27 business partners see uh, within this region. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's not a cost that are going towards books. It's not a cost going towards mm -hmm. A teacher's salary it's not a cost going towards a field trip unless you want to call being able to, to visit other models of this type of a program to figure out what does and doesn't work in that program okay. for how we then set it up here for these five regional schools you got it so like with this new skills for youth I think there were six school districts awarded the first or no, I apologize there were four districts awarded the first time there was only three awarded this time eventually there's going to be 13 so I foresee and where this we got in the second cohort so that's nice I see uh, E-Town up there community community technical college what part are they playing in this um, so they're going to be a piece of the dual credit piece so this isn't only career focus it's aligning dual credit and aligning industry certifications in with these courses um, so Mr. Uh, Jeff will understand um, in manufacturing they have quality and they have safety and they have all of these positions that we don't have here in the school. We're not offering that education. So again, offering those certificates and off planning all of that so our kids have that, those chances to learn that stuff. Well, one other question. Will, uh, I know that that, I'm going to call it that leader position, mm -hmm. uh, that on your fourth page is the very first line item there. Will that person, even though it's shared among all five, will they be based out of here? Not technically. Okay. Um, so this is what we'll come back with you next time. That job description um, is a link, and that's something that all four districts that have been involved are contributing to that job description to what they think that position should look like. Um, ultimately, it's going to come to the four superintendents sitting down and saying, either who are we going to hire how are we going to do this um when, but so i don't know where they'll be based that will be a, i guess super okay when, and, and why i said because with us being the sponsoring partner mm -hmm. the school agent I, I was just kind of curious because i i mean i think that will be something that the the, the leader of each of all our five districts i could see each of them going well, based out of ours and we want to make sure that we're figuring out how that we work together across the five and I, the other four districts that awarded it i think they all i mean we can use them as a model the person that they hired i think kind of more like a contract they're kind of a floater they did the job but they weren't really based anywhere mm -hmm. um but i mean i can say pretty confidently there were 11 people in that room and we led that grant like it wouldn't yeah. have happened without us they, so. they, they, this person they wouldn't would just need a spot to land every now and then to sit and possibly have 
spread out and do a little bit of work because they're not going to be sitting in an office. They're going to be going full steam across all five regional district partners. And, and constantly bringing yeah. us yeah. together, yes. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I go ahead and find which tab it is. Oh, there it was. Um, so moving on to 4C, a CKEC mini grant. Um, so we received an opportunity to write a mini grant um, middle of May. Um, I've been talking to Leah Harden at New Haven about getting some additional curriculum um, for special ed down there in math. That was a, a focus area for her. So we worked together to write a grant for materials um, and training web-based seminars for some of the teachers. We were allotted $1,500 was about the um, maximum, and that's what we submitted to CKC. And is that what you got? We got 17. Ooh. Congratulations. We got the full amount. We got $200 more. Um, I just put on there that that was the cost we were kind of looking at. We would take care of the rest if we needed to um, for my end, but they gave us 17. Thank and you. you're going to apply that to? Specifically to this curriculum. So it is math, you see. Um, it has manipulatives and then it also will um, train the teachers so CKC essentially paid for the trainings um, for the teachers to go through and the web-based um, platform yeah. yeah okay well you did really well congratulations good and the next one um, so for D office of vocational rehab agreement so we currently have um, a community work-based transition program coordinator um, who facilitates some of our students who go into the community for job skills. And this is just the memorandum of agreement uh, between Voc Rehab. Basically, they train um, the person to be able to bill for this and get our students um, out in the community with supports. It's just an agreement between the two, and I think you guys usually do this annually. Good job. Kind of fits in with um, workforce development and those roles, just us special ed supplying more support in the community. Good job. Thank you. Uh, 4E, uh, overnight out state field trips. Um, looks like we've got three of them on here that we'll just have to see and approve as part of consent. Do you come later this month? No. Tonight. So tonight. So yeah, you think it was submitted tonight. after the last board meeting? Um, just after May, so okay. as you can see, um, they are a little late on the list. So, so you can yeah. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, motion. The, looks like the one being FFA State Convention going on right now, debate at national convention because um, we actually have students who are running for national offices as well as a, at least one skit I know of that won at the state level to go on to the national level. Uh, and then the boys basketball camp at Georgetown, Kentucky. Um, the, only, the only thing that I'll say, and we've got a motion on it mm -hmm. to approve them, which we know we need to go on do, is we do want to make sure, I know that um, some of these probably we had an awareness of or the person that was in charge of it had an awareness of it in the past. It may just be that it kind of slipped off the radar or something like that. Or maybe they made a decision at the last minute. So we always like to try and make sure we get these well in advance so that we approve them before right. instead of either yeah. during or after the time frame. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good example of a system yeah. that Carl and I have talked about that supports student leadership, yeah. um, that uh, keeps principals and coaches in the loop throughout the year. That makes it easier for them. So we had a, a motion by Miss Berry. I'll second. Second by Miss Breeding. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, I'll be brief on the student handbook revisions. Um, this really came out of a conversation with um, community members, principals, um, and our student. So this is student handbook, and. We've had a lot of discussions around uh, how are we sending a message to our community? How are we energizing our community with our messaging? So think of this book as a handbook and a visioning book. 
it would be a touch point the parents would see with our from our school district so this would be one of the first things they would see so the intention is to inform but also to inspire and also to really think about the opportunities that we're creating in this district so there's a group of assistant principals in fact there's one in there right now uh, looking at it because they're working on it um, this team was put together about three weeks ago and they have started to really think about what does our district stand for and how can we communicate that vision to parents so originally this book was simply policies um, now it's evolving into something that's going to be more about keeping parents and students aware of all the opportunities in our school what we stand for and um, we'll also have those policies in there. Is it also where you say the progression of uh, safety and uh, conversations about school safety will be referenced? Yes, evolve. yes, yes, exactly. Um, think of it like a, a shorter version of the community center blueprint for parents and students that is focused on their needs as parents and students. Okay. Staff members would also use this book as a reference for um, some of the policies and procedures, especially as it relates to discipline. Which in the past was the primary purpose, now it's a supplementary purpose in addition to the visioning piece. So the goal for this is um, to present it in full for approval in July. Because we have five or six people working on this. Uh, they're meeting bi-weekly and they're they're, they have different sections they're working on, um, but it is a massive undertaking to do this well. So I'm sharing it with you now because I think it's something that's going to be, when you see it in July, um, it's something that you just know it's a process. And it's something that as we move into the to next year, it will, it will grow. And this, will this be shared not just with the students? But is this something that are like like uh, Ms. Gunny was talking about, you know, the twenty seven partners in the in the program that we're gonna partner with for the college and yeah. the workforce deal. Mm -hmm. Is this something then that we can also use as some type of marketing tool? Do they get that and do we open that their input on this? I think it's definitely gonna be used as a marketing tool. I think that in the um, next six weeks we're gonna be getting lots of input from, from a variety of stakeholders. Um, but I think as we move into the first year, we're going to have more opportunities to do that. But it is definitely going to be something that tells a story about our district that is inspiring to business, inspiring to parents and students. On, um, will we still be doing, and I know online um, enrollment may not be the correct mm -hmm. uh, phrase to use. And, online and registration. I, online registration, thank you. And I ask that because of some yes. of the pieces of this require a parent mm -hmm. and student sign off. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. online registration will work in parallel with yeah. this document uh, for students to acknowledge, parents to yeah. acknowledge, guardians. Uh, yes. Okay. And so we'll have copies of this in the schools, but, but we're also going to allow it to be for them to access it digitally. Um, It's definitely something that would be front and center on the school's website um, that would really be a, a way for us to, to continually talk about what is our, our purpose and how are we sending that, that message. Okay. Um, so 5B, policy and procedure update. The piece that we always love every year, right? So I want to give a lot of credit to Carla uh, as she's as she's taken a lot of leadership on this. Um, amazing the organization that it takes to make that happen. What she's done, and really she's going to talk a little bit about um, the purpose. So you have in front of you the the packets that we have always used in the past, and feel free to to use that if you like. But um, to simplify the process, we've put this in a Google Sheet: the policy and procedure updates. <clears throat> so, I'm just going no, to... I don't want that. Take that away. I don't want the paper anymore. Please. I do, so thank you very much. Okay. So, um, in column B there, you'll see the name of the, the policy or the procedure. And if you click on that, that's a, a live link and you can see the, um, the revisions and updates that are here in this packet. In column D is a short summary of changes. I'm just going to read through those changes. 
if I'm going too fast, if you have a question, just stop me. So, so is this considered a first reading? This then? is our first yes. reading. Okay. And so, procedures only need one reading. Policies need two readings, and we'll put those in the consent agenda for the regular June board meeting, and we'll get those approved. So, we'll just start um, there with definitions. And this is charter schools are defined by statute and are included in these definitions. General powers and duties of the board. This is a legal change that permits board members to purchase life insurance if offered as a part of a group plan by the local board of education. The district planning revisions required boards to approve the CDIP by January 1 of each school year. Regular meetings, this is a legal change that allows closed sessions to be conducted through video teleconference and precisely identify the primary location of the video teleconference and, where all members can be seen and heard. The one that you brought up earlier in the year, I think it was, Ms. Dye. It is no um, but this that that but well but one four two the one she was just reading is about closed sessions mm -hmm. which those have never been allowed to be done mm -hmm. by remote uh, interaction but open regular sessions have been okay so is that what some of what you were getting at you're also thinking about yeah yeah okay it, yeah i'm not sure about on the 19th yeah i don't know so if you want to the legal change that allows closed sessions to be conducted through video telecom we haven't read that one. we haven't read that one like it or not this is stuff that the states you know yeah this so this these no, are this recommended stuff the states allowing so this is recommended by ksba due to changes in the law mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on to closed session. Um, this is a legal change that allows closed sessions to be conducted through video teleconference. In-service training, this is a legal, legal change that sets new, require, new training requirements regarding charter schools. Um, the next few are brand new policies regarding charter schools. We have authorization of charter schools. Charter statutes and regulations require boards as authorizers to have an authorization process policy. The charter school application process, same thing, charter statutes and regulations require boards as authorizers to have an authori authorization process policy. If we go back up to 1.42, we just okay. had, it was a, if, you, if we just reread that one, it was a legal change that allows regular sessions. We had closed sessions. So okay, so there's two there. So oh, 1.42 is pertaining to regular. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, I just changed it. It was yeah. closed. And I the description in D. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay. So we just reread that one as regular. Reread oh. 1.42. That yeah. is a legal change that allows regular sessions to be conducted yes. through video teleconference and precisely identify the primary location of the video teleconference where all members can be seen and heard. Is that good? That's right. Yeah. Okay. All right, charter school contract. Uh, this says charter statutes and regulations require boards as authorizers to have a contract policy and procedure. Charter school monitoring assessment and let's see here what this says. An annual reports. Charter statutes and regulations require boards as authorizers to have a performance monitoring policy. Charter school renewal, non-renewal, revocation, and closure. Charter statutes and regulations require boards as authorizers to have a policy regarding renewal, non-renewal, revocation, and closure. Conversion to charter schools. Potential conversions of a public school to a public charter school is covered under this law. Election of school council members. This is a legal change that requires an SBDM council parent member to provide a letter from the cabinet stating there are no findings of substantiated child abuse or neglect on record. Comprehensive school improvement plan. Revisions require each school to approve the CSEP by January 1 of each school year. Hiring, this is, pertains to certified staff. The amendment to the law ch that changes the 30 day vacancy requirement to 15 days also requires applicants to provide a letter from the cabinet to health and family service stating there are no findings of substantiated child abuse or neglect on record coaches and assistant coaches and sponsors 
allows administrators, principals, and assistant principals to serve as head coach, assistant coach, or sponsor of extracurricular activities with the approval of the superintendent. So let me ask a question on that one there, because I know historically mm -hmm. um, we've, we've recognized that the, the roles that those administrators in the buildings mm -hmm. have is so extensive mm -hmm. that do they have the, the time to be able to mm -hmm. uh, be a head coach, assistant coach, and so forth. So is what this is saying is that with your approval, they they could potentially do that now? Uh, yeah, and I, I would say this really came from our conversation looking to student leadership, okay. um, the way we're paying stipends out. And I think that as we think about expanding the notion of student leadership to athletics and other organizations, mm -hmm. that this gives us flexibility in certain cases if we need it, especially where we have cases, and this will rarely happen, but you have cases where people move into roles. Gotcha. Um, okay. And again, I think it's a, Tim, Tim and I talked about this uh, for a while because he talked about the, the history behind this policy and we both agreed that it is really about using um, good judgment and understanding time and place, okay. knowing that it's not typically something that's going to be sustained, but we also don't want to put uh, programs in a place where it's they're available. in peril because we don't have the adults available. Right. Okay. And, and, uh, and only I bring that up and ask because I, I know there have been instances where we've had assistant principals mm -hmm. resign that position and they were good at what they were doing but resign that because of their passion for the students and wanting to coach them in that kind of a capacity. And so this kind of removes that as a potential barrier. We, yeah, so we talked about this idea of when we put people first, we're also talking, we're also expecting that we have the right people in these roles. And yep. that with that, sometimes yep. we're going to need, so this person might coach this thing or lead this organization, and they may they may not do it for a year, only a year, but it's something that sure. gives us the flexibility no, no. if yeah. it's the right fit. Okay. <coughs> okay, that makes sense. All right. Okay, so uh, moving on to salaries, as it pertains to certified staff, this allows the district to have a differentiated compensation for teachers employed in a school that is identified by KDE as being in targeted or comprehensive support and improvement status. I have a quick question. Do we have schools in our district that do this? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, the next, holidays and vacations. Um, this policy regarding holidays has now been revised to include language about vacation time. Vacation days must be approved by the superintendent principal or designee. Sick leave, full-time certified employees shall be entitled to 10 sick days with pay each school year for 166 to 205 contract days. Educational professional leave requires a local board to grant a two-year leave of absence to teachers under continuing service contracts who have been offered employment in public charter schools. Evaluation, this legal change requires the district certified evaluation plan to utilize the Kentucky framework for personnel evaluation. Hiring, as it pertains to classified staff, this legal change requires applicants to provide a letter from the cabinet stating there are no findings of substantiated child abuse or neglect on record. Salaries for classified, this amendment to the law removes the requirement for the factual list of individual salaries to be furnished to a qualified newspaper. Holidays and vacations for classified staff, this policy regarding holidays has now been revised to include language about vacation time and the vacation time must be approved by the superintendent, principal or designee. Sick leave for classified. Full-time classified employees shall be entitled to sick, 10 sick days with pay each school year for 166 to 205 contract days. Discipline, suspension, and dismissal of a classified employee. This requires employees to report to the superintendent when they have been found by the cabinet to have abused or neglected a child and authorizes discipline for failure to report. Substitute teachers. This is a legal change that requires applicants to provide a letter from the cabinet stating there are no findings of substantiated child abuse or neglect on record. Volunteers. A superintendent who is requiring a background check may also require the volunteer to provide a letter from the cabinet stating there are no findings of substantiated abuse or neglect. 
budget planning and adoption. This allows flexibility regarding the minimum reserves subject to KBE approval, increased oversight by KDE in the working budget for dis districts during the 1819 and 1920 school years. The district issuance of checks. This is a recommendation by our staff regarding the issuance of checks. We're adding language to avoid undue hardships on vendors and employees. And this is regarding payments made between regular board meetings. Bidding. This requires a contractor who works on school premises during school hours when students are present to provide a letter from the cabinet stating there are no findings of substantiated child abuse or neglect on record. Financial statements. Legal change to include information for publication on, did I get that right? A annual financial report. Security. This clarifies that the principal has general oversight of school property and removes ministerial duty of being held responsible for reasonable security. Regular bus stops. This clarifies that the principal or designee shall have authorization to prevent a student to be discharged at a location other than the regular bus stop. Conduct on bus, this clarifies that the principal has general authority to and is responsible for discipline of pupils who ride school buses. Alternative meal, this is a change um, recommended by our staff. This removes language where an alternate meal will be provided after charges of $10. Essential workplace programs, House Bill 3 creates a new chapter of KRS 158 requiring districts to implement essential workplace ethics programs that promote characteristics that are critical to success in the workplace. Federal programs, this revises policy to conform with the, with the Every Student Succeeds Act, uniform guidance and updates references to such. Title I, Parent and Family Engagement Policy. This clarifies that to be consistent with FERPA, not all family members have access to individual test results. The school calendar, this legal change allows for appointments to the calendar committee in addition to those already listed. School attendance areas, this legal change prohibits a local school district from assigning or requiring any student enrolled in the local school district to attend a public charter school. Admissions and attendance, House Bill 527 defines best interest of the child as it relates to educational stability absences and excuses. This change, this changes the number of parent notes to four per semester for grades K through five and two per semester for grades K through six, six through 12. And additionally, one parent note for one day missed or tardy. Dismissal from school. This legal change requires that when the cabinet is awarded custody of an abused, neglected or dependent child, it must notify the principal or any assistant principal the DPP of the names of persons authorized to contact or remove the child from the school grounds. Healthcare examination. This requires a current immunization certificate for homeschooled students who are attending in-school classes or participating in sports or other sponsored school-sponsored extracurricular activities. Student health and safety. Effective with the 1819 school year, House Bill 30 changed the current suicide training. Emergency medical treatment. This legal change adds medication prescribed to treat seizure disorder symptoms. Child abuse requires that when the cabinet is awarded custody of a child, it must notify the principal, assistant principal, and DPP of the names of the persons authorized to contact or remove this child from school grounds. Eligibility for athletics. This requires students enrolled in a public charter school that does not offer interscholastic athletic activities or to be eligible to participate in that activity at the district school of this student's residence. Let's see, now we'll start with the procedures. Charter school authorization. This requires charter school authorizers to have policies and practices consistent with the principles and professional standards for authorizers of public charter schools. Charter school application. Charter statutes and regulations require boards as authorizers to have an application process, policy, and procedure. Charter school contracts. Charter statutes and regulations require boards as authorizers to have a contract policy and procedure. Evaluation of the superintendent. KDE continues to maintain authority for approval of all superintendent evaluation plans. However, it is our understanding that KDE will no longer be requiring adherence to the recent SPGES model. 
Boards may continue incorporating their own evaluation plan. It must be meaningful and tied to goals that impact student achievement, gap closure, and other items that are relevant to the success of students in each, di each district. Hiring. This amendment to the law changes the 30-day vacancy requirement to 15 days. Salaries. This change in the law allows a district to have differentiated compensation for teachers employed in a school that is identified by KDE as being in targeted or comprehensive support and improvement status. Certified checklist. This legal change requires applicants to provide a letter from the cabinet stating there are no findings of substantiated child abuse or neglect on record. Classified checklist. It's the same thing. It requires applicants to provide a letter from the cabinet. Crowd control. This clarifies the principal's authority of the orderly conduct and safety on school property and removes a ministerial duty. Eligibility of transportation. House Bill 527 defines best interest of the child and requires districts to provide transportation to the school of origin if determined to be in the best interest of the child as it relates to education stability. School and community nutrition program. When a student has reached the maximum charge limit, he or she will no longer be required to either bring a sack lunch from home or eat an alternate meal. They'll just be able to eat a, a, a regular meal. Extended school, direct student services. The Every Student Succeeds Act of 2015 eliminated the Supplemental Education Services Program and replaced it with the Direct Student Services Program with a different set of offerings. Student enrollment and homeless immigration status. Revisions to the law adds unaccompanied youth and foster care liaison. Emergency medical care procedures. Change to the law adds medication prescribed to treat seizure disorder symptoms. Requires that a seizure action plan be created for students with seizure disorders. Training for personnel and how they can be contacted during an emergency. Comprehensive school improvement plan reports. Assist is now e -proof. The volunteer character and fitness. Change in the law states that a superintendent who is requiring a background check may require the volunteer to provide a letter from the cabinet stating there are no findings of substantiated child abuse or neglect on record. And then we have some policies for that pertain to special ed that um, Tiffany is going to talk to us about. Um, we'll on that. So these were um, policies and procedures outlined through um, federal regulations and state regulations from Teresa Combs, who used to be at KS KSBA. She's now on her own and she provides us with that information. Um, she has not sent anything out since 2016 because we haven't had any change in law at this time. So all of this may be kind of new to you guys um, as far as these are all things that we already implement. This is what guidance document we've always um, lived from. So if you have any specific questions, I'd be glad to go over that. That's how a student is um, evaluated, how their service, the due process, anything that requires regular or is followed through regulation. Hey, Teresa Combs did it. You can better believe it's been thorough. And she can answer any question any I have question. about any of it too. Yes. So yes, that's where that comes from. Yep. The going back to your question, Ms. Berry, thank you for taking uh, your question was, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Breeding, on um, first reading, uh, the, on the policies, the procedures only require one reading, correct? Mm -hmm. So the, the, everything down towards the bottom there where it had that uh, P in it, all of those, that would be the first reading and only reading on those, correct? Okay. So. Since we've had first reading here, second reading will actually be at the uh, June 19th board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, if there are any questions as we read, you know, through the hyperlink there, mm -hmm. would uh, would you want those directed toward you, Carmen? Sure. Okay. Uh, and that way then, so that you would be kind of that entry point mm -hmm. for us, if it's something that maybe then you needed to refer to, whether it was Ms. Clark or Mr. Hawkinsmith or whomever. Sure. Okay. Does that work for you too? Yeah, we've we've talked about uh, or organizing management of policies and procedures under um, Carla's umbrella that she's working on in terms of thinking about communication leadership. Well, I know that a lot of that also is your wheelhouse that you're very familiar with from your past experiences too with Judge Heath. So. 
Okay. Thank you, Carol. Um, so, Dina, yeah, let me go back a page here. Uh, so we are now down to item six, student shareholder engagement, guest comments. Um, I'm kind of just looking, I'm not reading, I see, I see one head shake, I see another head shake in there. Uh, so then uh, we would uh, need a motion to convene executive session per KRS 61.810 sub 1 sub C for discussions of proposed litigation and KRS 61.810 sub 1 sub F for discussions that may lead to the removal of an employee. Motion. motion by Mr. Dickerson. All second. Second by Ms. Dye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. So we'll be back in your conference room? Yes. Okay. Um, so we need a motion to reconvene regular session. I'll make a motion to reconvene regular session. Motion by Ms. Dye. I will second that. Second by Ms. Berry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. There was no action taken during the executive session. So then we would need a motion to adjourn this uh, work session. Motion. Motion by Ms. Breeding. Second. Second by Mr. Dickerson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. All right. Can we recycle this paper somewhere or shut the computer in your trash? Yeah, I'll do that.